All right, thanks for watching. And I want to talk about a little topic that's bugged me for a long time, but now I finally figure out why this is true. Namely, consider a differential equation like y double prime minus 6y prime plus 9y equals 0. Now, the way you learn this is simply you see the auxiliary equation is r squared minus 6r plus 9 which can be factored out as r minus 3 squared. You let that be 0. So r is 3 with a multiple root. So with a double root. And you just say, well, y of t is a e to the 3t plus b t e to the 3t. And lots of people say, well, why do you put this t? Well, you just do it to get a guess, which is sort of true. I mean, it's differential equations. Usually in differential equations, you guess a solution and you hope it works. But then I thought about this because this has bugged me and I finally figured out why this is true. So there's actually a very elegant way of figuring this out. So take this equation y double prime minus 6y plus 9y equals 0, it turns out you can factor this out quite nicely. This is really the same as d minus 3 times d minus 3 of y equals 0. What does that notation mean? d means differentiate. So d minus 3y, that's dy minus 3y, and that's y prime minus 3y. And indeed, if you do d minus 3 of that, so if you do d minus 3 of d minus 3y, you get y prime d minus 3 of y prime minus 3y. So y prime minus 3y prime minus 3 times y prime minus 3y. And you get y double prime minus 3y prime minus 3y prime plus 9y, which indeed gives you your differential equation. y double prime minus 6y prime plus 9y, which is 0. So indeed, an equivalent formulation of this equation, it's simply this. But it turns out this helps us solve our equation. So now, let me erase this. And let me show you why. Let z be d minus 3y. And we'll get back to that. Then we get d minus 3z equals 0. Hopefully I won't get too dz because it's dz. But this is just z prime minus 3z equals 0. So z prime equals to 3z. But we know the solution to that. That's just a e to the 3t. So zt equals to, let's see, let's say b e to the 3t. And you'll see why. So z, which is defined by d minus 3y, is just b e to the 3t. And now that we know z, let's just find y via this equation. So we have z d minus 3y equals to z, again, by definition, but z is b e to the 3t. So unraveling this, we get y prime minus 3y is b e to the 3t. Now let's multiply this equation by integrating factor which is just a fancy way of saying, let's multiply this by e to the minus 3t. So we get e to the minus 3t y prime minus 3 e to the minus 3t y equals b. And the reason we did this, notice this is a hidden Prada loop because this is really y prime e to the minus 3t plus y e to the minus 3t prime equals b. Because the derivative of e to the minus 3t is minus 3e to the minus 3t. So by the Prada loop, 
we get y e to the minus 3t prime equals to b. And now just integrate, so we get y e to the minus 3t, it's bt, so you see, that's where the t comes from, plus another constant a, and you can just write it as a plus bt. And well, how do you find y? You just multiply by e to the 3t. So y of t is e to the 3t times this jump, which is precisely what you want, a e to the 3t plus b t e to the 3t. Ta-da! And this is also how you get those other formulas for higher roots. Yep. Uh, you basically would define two other functions that help you, and it would solve this recursively. So again, there's not a coincidence where this t comes from. It actually makes sense. All right, I hope you like this little math extravaganza. If you want to see more math, please make sure to subscribe to my channel. Thank you very much.